Imperial Japanese because they were as sadistic as the Nazis, especially in the the rape of Nanking. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. Well, that's actually true. I mean, the Rockefellers were one of the most wealthy families on the earth 110 years ago. And they did fund the war machine of the Japanese, and we did send the U.S. military over there to train the Japanese, and then green-lighted them to have a war with Russia. They, of course, were our ally in World War I. Then they got double-crossed uh, in the late 1930s and then into 41. and I'm not saying the Imperial Japanese were good. They were bad. The American people were very moral, so were the Japanese, but our, our rulers were evil. And uh, thousands of U.S. troops went into, quote, private military arms funded by the U.S. government, uh, hundreds of aircraft, the best-known Flying Tigers, and were attacking the Japanese all over Asia, but predominantly in China. And the Japanese did public protest. Their embassy protested for several years. Then there was an oil embargo against Japan, and uh, the U.S. was making noises about attacking Japanese-controlled uh, uh, countries, and so Japan decided to do a sneak attack to knock out our Pacific fleet. Their midget submarines, four of them, attacked that morning, two hours before. They launched the attack two hours before. Uh, several, one got into the harbor, another ran into reefs about a mile away from the harbor, another got off course and came up on land, and another was sunk, and that's CNN. In fact, guys, search this. I said do this a few days ago. I don't know if you saw it. CNN.com, uh, did United States start Pearl Harbor, or did the United States attack Japan first? And then they show an image of the submarine on the bottom and say the U.S. sunk this midget submarine, I think they said an hour and a half before. I mean, the point is the Japanese were coming to attack, but when subs were attacking, the Navy was ordered to stand down still because they wanted that full image of dead uh, sailors and airmen and uh, Marines. But I appreciate your call. I cover that in my film, Terror Storm. Uh, in Terror Storm, we have the CNN article. But, but see, I already knew this. As a child, we would come and visit uh, my grandparents here in Austin. My mother's from Austin. And we would, I remember when I was probably 10 years old, because I loved war museums, they took me to the Pacific War Museum. It's the official war museum. It's gotten a lot bigger than it was then. It, it was the old home of Admiral Nimitz, uh, landlocked in Fredericksburg, Texas, 200 miles from the coast. And the, the, it was a hotel. And uh, the, uh, the uh, building, it's a big building, is shaped like the bow of a ship sticking out on uh, Main Street there. And now it's the George Herbert Walker uh, Bush uh, Pacific U.S. Museum. That is the museum for the Pacific War in the U.S. And they've got one of the midget subs, and it was there when I was a kid, and, and hidden in plain view, they didn't point out that we attacked the Japanese. It just said that morning they sunk this Japanese sub and three others. Uh, and you can go there and see one of the subs that, it, that was attacking or coming into attack and got sunk, but still Pearl Harbor was ordered to stand down. I mean, they just hide the trees in, in plain view. Does that take away from the heroism of the people that fought off the Japanese attack or those that died on the uh, battleships? No. The point is, the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth, and it's now declassified the U.S. had broken the Japanese purple and blue code and knew exactly what they were going to do weeks before. It took weeks for that task force to steam from Japan into uh, that area of the Pacific. That's way across the Pacific. If you look at the map, here's Japan, here's Hawaii, here's the west coast of the United States. They had to come all the way, and the aircraft and the U.S. submarines and all the islands we controlled, they all knew they were coming, and they were ordered to stand down and die. Okay, and that's how compartmentalization works. The average guys out there, you know, playing volleyball on the deck of the battleships, they had no idea. But the Navy was ordered, you stand down. Radar installations picked up the uh, planes coming in an hour before, ordered to stand down. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Tim in Washington. You're on the air, Tim. Yes. Uh, Alex, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, sir. Welcome. Hey, I've got a couple points for you and maybe um, a question um, and an idea as well. Uh, have you considered calling for InfoWarriors to meet and organize in mass? And if you have, and you haven't uh, considered it, how dangerous or viable would that be? It'd be very viable, sir. But I have always decided to. I've done some rallies, some events. I, I mean, I've, I've gone to events. I've been invited to speak with Ron Paul and 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 in Houston, and haven't gone because I go. I say to myself, is it better to get in a car and drive four hours? and stay in a hotel, 
or is it better to stay here and go on international television and do radio interviews and make my own videos that reach hundreds of millions? And so it just bang for the buck, bang for the energy buck for my time and energy. It's better to sit here and just inform people about what's happening, point out solutions, states' rights, uh, abolishing the Fed, things like that. And then supporting groups like We Are Change and the Liberty you know, meetups uh, that go on with the, with the uh, Campaign for Liberty. I mean, I've never wanted to be the big leader. Uh, not just because that's even more dangerous to do. That is part of it in the back of my mind. But because the time, the energy, this radio show has power because we do it every day. And we put out media every day for 15 years. And it's powerful info. But my mission is to wake people up and then to empower them, um, not not to just go out and say we're going to have events everywhere or we're going to. I mean, I promote other activists who say, you know, tax free fifteen, uh, or uh, you know, protest the IRS, or uh, go out and confront Al Gore everywhere he goes, to where he won't go out in public now, and everywhere people go and confront him, it ends up being in the media that he's a liar. I, I mean, I just have a different strategic view. We are building uh, you know, something that really is well designed and, and it's it's behind schedule and you know uh, it's cost more money than it was supposed to and a lot of other issues. Uh, a, a first rate uh, thing that's like Meetup and social network and Facebook all rolled into one, and it's being developed and it should be done in a few months, Lord willing. I mean, if I quit making the film I'm doing and quit doing everything else, I could haunt you and make sure it got done. But we're, we're trying. Uh, and people are doing a great job. Uh, but uh, what I want to do is just get people together. I believe it's not so much going to even be a dating site. It's going to have something similar to that, just where get your communities together. Create communities of family. Uh, meet like-minded people. That's the true value. That's more valuable than all the gold in the hills is good friends uh, and, and, and people who are of like minds coming together. Uh, but does that answer your question? It kind of does, yes. Um, I also had um, a suggestion or maybe an idea for anybody else out there that maybe organizing a a kind of an MLK march to Washington, a, a civil disobedience of non-participation, where we just travel and march and just see how many people actually show up. Well, that's a good and idea, but there have been hundreds of marches just in the last year, and the media tries to ignore it, but the alternative media covers it, and so it is having an effect. There isn't going to be one silver bullet. But everybody just putting one foot in front of the other. The, and I appreciate your call. Uh, great points. Just the power of you creating a one-line slogan in a website and putting it on power poles in your town. Chances are the Orwellian state will try to block you. And then that censorship will get it all over the news. You know, How dare someone, the media always takes the bait, how dare someone put up signs of Obama as a joker with the word fascism or infowars.com under it. We need to arrest whoever did this. And then they send a cop to the guy's house. It happened in Texas, Florida, uh, England. Then it becomes news. Why are you censoring? Then more people go out and do it. That became an international phenomenon. Reached hundreds of millions of people conservatively. It was in hundreds of newscasts, hundreds of newspapers. Uh, the, the, the local newspaper in um, Kyle, you know, talked about how it was evil and horrible and had it on its front cover. And it made more people go out and do it. I, I mean, it's just, it, 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 it's unlimited. Start a website, start a radio blog, call into talk shows. None of us are going to fix this overnight. It is a movement, a renaissance, an enlightenment, an awakening, a journey back to freedom, a rediscover of the spirit of 70, 1776, a rediscovery of the spirit of liberty. All right, let's go fast now through calls because I want to hit a bunch of news before this hour ends. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Ronnie in Tejas. You're on the air, Ronnie. We proceed. Thank you, sir, for everything. And, yes, the... Kenyan-born Indonesian subject, so-called President, so-called Barack Obama, i.e. Barry Sotaro's sickening slide to tyranny, is in full blast. It's happening, people. Therefore, in the meanwhile, with joy, Alex, I speak whenever allowed to the Austin City Council of Criminals about toxic sludge, peace and freedom, medicinal marijuana, etc. But now, and that's only 25% of the time they let me. Curiously, these criminals, they... They yeah, first they first, first they let people only have citizen communications uh, by signing up a week before. Then they start letting you only speak every uh, what three weeks, uh, and next it will, you won't be able to speak. Period. 
75 percent of the time and, and every week though i can address the travis county commissioner's court for a whopping 180 yeah, seconds but you know but how to go speak you can go speak on agenda items uh separately i do that as much as i can and i carry my political signs in the background but they they won't let me do that only when i speak but well the austin a, city council is a lawless group of criminals looting and robbing the people of austin there's no doubt they are globalists 2.6 billion in taxes in the next three years on energy uh, more than doubling the cost, uh, bigger than all the other tax increases combined, total evil. They, they all need to be run on a rail. They are a group of scallywags.